To God be the glory indeed, great things he has done. God is doing amazing things. The fact that you are still alive, alive to watch this program today, alive to do your activities, it means God is working. Of course, sometimes God is working and maybe he's not working what we want him to work in that season or the way he, you want him to work in that season. But the truth is, God is always working. God is always in business. And we thank God for an opportunity to come to you once again with a good news broadcast. I thank God for the way he is touching lives. I thank God for the way the power of his resurrection is touching lives, is transforming lives. And we want to hear from you. You know, if the message is blessing you in one way or another, we want to hear from you. Please send us a message, one of those numbers that are on the screen. You can also support this uh, broadcast. You can be a partner with our ministry. Partners stand with us on a regular basis, supporting us financially because the work that we do, coming to you every Sunday, requires money. Coming to other millions with, on the radio requires money. The things that we do in the ministry, they require a lot of money. And that money is given to us by friends and partners of the ministry. And so I encourage you to consider if these messages, if this gospel broadcast has been a blessing to you, continue uh, uh, blessing others by being part of it and by being a partner with the ministry. Today I want to continue on the series that I started last week, talking about the resurrection. I don't want us to let go of the Easter season just yet. You know, you can find yourself when you are in a routine of just, you know, seasons come and seasons go, uh, days come and days go, and so Easter is... You drive to the village and come back, then you wait for Christmas, and then drive there and come back. And so your life is just like that, you know, different. And in Uganda we have very many holidays, this holiday, that holiday, that holiday, you know. And so you find you're not getting the significance out of those days. But we are trying to get the significance out of Easter. We are trying to get a hold of the truth that Easter represents, you know. Of course, we are not saying that, that Jesus died on that day which is on the calendar. We, we, we are not sure that that is the day when Jesus died. And, you know. But what, what we are celebrating in that season is that on a certain day in history, Jesus died. And he died for our sins according to the scriptures. We saw that last time. You know, Jesus died for your sins. You don't have to die for your sins. That's why he died for our sins. He took our place so that we would not die for our sins. Isaiah speaks it rightly in Isaiah 53. And he says, the punishment that brought us life was put upon him. You know, when Jesus was dying for our sins, God was punishing sin. The sin of the whole world. The punishment and the judgment of the sin of the whole world was put on Jesus. So Jesus became, there's a portion which says, he became a propitiation, or he became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. John writes, he became the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and then he adds, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. You find that in First John, I think chapter 2. Jesus became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So, on Good Friday, that's why it's a Good Friday, because on that day, for Jesus it was bad. For Jesus it was pain. For Jesus it was bleeding. For Jesus it was loss of life. But for us, it was gain. That's why it's Good Friday. On Saturday, he was buried. When he was buried, in the spirit realm, he went to hell and got the keys of death and hell from the devil. Because of that, we no longer have to be afraid of the devil. We no longer have to be afraid of his demons. Because the keys, his authority was removed from him. 
that authority was handed to us. And on the third day, he rose again. The Bible says he rose again to secure our justification. When you read in Hebrews, Jesus rose again to secure our justification. Because he rose again, we can now be put in right standing with God. When God looks at us, it's as though we have never seen. That is the good news of the gospel. He rose again so that we would no longer be afraid of, the, of death. We would no longer be slaves to the fear of death because he conquered death. And in this session, we are continuing to talk about this power of the resurrection. This, you know, this power that was exerted on Jesus, raising him from the dead, Paul prays and reveals to us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 18, 19, that this power is available for us. This power is in us. And last week I showed you a testimony of a woman that had been bedridden for two months and the power touched her instantly. And she got healed. We prayed for that woman and God did an amazing thing. She couldn't sit. She was able to sit. She was able to jump. She, she, she told us something that I now feel like I'm flexible. I, I liked that. She said, I, I, I feel like I'm flexible now. God touched her. Today I will show you another woman that was healed of a back problem for a long time. We have, uh, in our ministry, we've seen people, even not only on healing station, but in other places I go, I've seen God touch people with back problems. It's an anointing that God has given us. Uh, it's a grace that God has given us to bring healing to people with back problems. So after that testimony, I will show you that testimony. And then I will pray for you. If you have a back problem, be expectant. The power of God is going to touch you today. So as I continue, we are going to now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12. Because Paul starts to deal with a certain contention that arose out of the gospel that he was preaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12, Paul says, But now if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, like we do, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how is it that some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? The way it was many years ago, during the time of Paul preaching, it still is today. There are some who contend that there is no resurrection of the dead. There are some who say, let us enjoy our life, let us eat and drink, because we don't know what will happen after we die. There are some who will even say, and they have entire you know, denominations, they say there is no resurrection of the dead, it all ends here. And Paul begins to address this contention. Paul begins to deal with this argument. You know the Bible says that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And then he says we cast down imaginations, we cast down every wrong thinking and every high thing that exalts itself. When we are preaching the gospel, one of the things that we are dealing with is wrong teaching, wrong imagination, wrong beliefs, so that when they get out of the way, then the truth can come in your life and set you free. As long as those other uh, wrong teachings and wrong doctrines, and as long as all of them are still in your head, then they will kind of take the space that the truth of God is supposed to occupy. Okay. So Paul says, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how is it that some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, verse 13. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not risen. Verse 14. And if Christ has not risen, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is devoid of truth and is fruitless. That's what I want to talk about today. If Christ has not risen, then our preaching is in vain. If Christ has not risen, then this broadcast is happening in vain. If Christ has not risen, then all the sermons that you've ever heard from your reverend or your pastor, they are in vain. If Christ has not risen, then 
um, even us preachers, we are wasting our time. But you know that's not true. Because you know how preaching has blessed you. You know how this gospel has blessed you. You know how pastor spoke at church and you were so uplifted. You know how the reverend gave the other sermon and you felt so energized. You know. Why? Because Christ rose from the dead. Because for me, I read this verse in reverse. Because Christ rose from the dead, my preaching is not in vain. Because Christ rose from the dead, this broadcast is not in vain. Because Christ rose from the dead, the message that I'm bringing to you, it has life. The life of resurrection. Because Christ rose from the dead, when you listen to this message, faith shall come into your heart. Because Christ rose from the dead, as you listen to this preaching, healing will happen to you and your family. Because Christ rose from the dead, we can keep on preaching. And let me talk to a pastor who is watching me and may be on the verge of giving up. A preacher who is watching me, you have been preaching and you know, you're feeling discouraged. You don't seem to uh, see any results of your preaching. I want to encourage you, don't quit. Because Christ rose from the dead, your preaching is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord, that's the last verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Don't give up the ministry. Don't give up. Yes, you started that church and maybe things are not going well and maybe people have not yet come. Or you have been preaching and people are not getting saved. You know, the, the story is told of a man who went and did a crusade for a full week. He preached in the place for a full week. The first day, nobody got saved. The second day, nobody got saved. The third day, on the last day, one little boy came forward to give his life to Jesus. And he was discouraged and said, But Lord, you know, I preached, I tried everything, but just one little boy. The little boy who came forward, his name is Billy Graham. You can imagine how the life has, the world has been changed by the ministry of the late evangelist Billy Graham. He was the only person who got saved in a crusade that took a whole week. Child of God, servant of God, your labor in God is not in vain. Your preaching is not in vain because Christ rose from the dead. And you who is listening, keep listening because our preaching is not in vain. Keep tuning on to this broadcast because my preaching is not in vain. As you listen, something is happening in your body. As you listen, something is happening in your mind. As you listen, an anointing is being released to you. So keep listening to this message. Keep listening. You know, we tell you that these messages are also on our YouTube channel. Go on our YouTube channel and listen to our messages. Attend. We have... We started a daily morning glory online and a daily lunch hour. You know, if you have an office, you are in a business, and you don't know how to attend morning glory and lunch hour, we have you covered. You know, you can just connect with us on that link that I have put on the screen. Or send a message on that, um, that phone number which is on the screen. We can pray together every day. You can listen to the word of God every day because we are praying and speaking the word of God and releasing impartation, praying for people. And people have been healed and touched through the upper, the CNI upper room. You can join us because our preaching is not in vain. Even your listening is not in vain. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you listen to the word, something will happen in your life. Something will happen. Don't give up. Don't give up listening to the word concerning your family. Don't give up listening to the word concerning your marriage, concerning your business. Our preaching is not in vain. Our preaching is changing your life. Our preaching is changing. It's just a matter of days. Because the Bible says, as long as the earth remains, God spoke and said, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. You could be right now in seed time. And we are planting the word of God in your heart. We are planting the word of God in your life. At a certain time, there will be harvest. When you start seeing the results of things we have been preaching. When you start seeing the results of the prayers we have been praying. Don't give up. Keep listening. Keep attending. Keep trusting God. The testimony I want to bring you today, uh, this is a precious woman and uh, she had had a back problem for a long time. She came to the healing station and uh, even when she was seated on the chair, 
she felt a lot of pain. She, 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 wanted, she wanted like to get off the chair and well, she was in so much pain. But like I mentioned, God has given us a grace and we thank God for that grace. We've seen so many people healed of back problems, you know, back problems. They've gone to the hospital, they told them they have subluxation of the bone, they have disc prolapse and things like that. And we've seen God heal them. Somebody had, some people had maybe issues dealing with following like caesarean section. There are women who stay with that pain where they put the injection and the pain just stays there. And we've seen people healed. This woman was healed at the healing station. Let me take you in the uh, healing station and you listen to her testimony. After that, I pray for you. Praise the Lord. I'm here to thank the Lord. The first healing station in March, I came here. I had a back problem. And uh, the servant of God called out those that had back problems. How much I had been told by the doctors that my bone had dislocation of the bone. Uh, my problem was, was my, my back. As I was seated in the chair, feeling too much pain and I wanted to sit down. When you called out those that had back problems, we came here and lined up here. He didn't touch us. He told other ministers to lay hands Yes. Yes. Me, I think it's first I remember <laughs> at home is Chimbuku person where I was go. She was here, she was standing here. But I'm here to thank God that from that day. Hallelujah! <laughs> I want to tell my fellow brethren here just believe if you come here and they give you a word of knowledge just know that it is done because why don't they call people who have headaches the moment they call God that is back to earth I told God that mine I'm leaving it here hallelujah glory to Jesus Hallelujah. What a God. What a Savior. What a healer. You know Isaiah 9, 7 says, To the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Another version says, Of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And his kingdom is a kingdom of power. His kingdom is a kingdom of healing and deliverance and miracles and signs and wonders. When we see one person healed, we know the kingdom has taken over in their life. The kingdom is taking over in your life also. The power of the resurrection that I'm talking about, I now pray and release it in your life. Especially if you have a back problem. I want to pray for you this day. I want to release the power. And I want you to get back to us because we know what we carry. We know the anointing that God has given us to deal with back issues. If God touches you today, we'll be excited to hear from you. You can send us your testimony. Send us a message on one of those numbers. Reach out to us. and Or you can come to the upper room and pray with us every morning and lunchtime and tell us, that, you know, join with that link on the upper room or send a message on that phone and they'll tell you and share your testimony. And we pray even more with you concerning that issue or your loved one. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing to your back right now. In the wonderful name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command pain in your back to be gone. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak total healing. I get your bones to get back together. I command your bones to get back together in the name of Jesus. Every nerve that was damaged, be healed. Blood vessels that were out of place, get in place. In the mighty name of Jesus, whichever issue was in the back, in the vertebrae, I speak healing now. I release the power of God in your back. From the back of your neck right down to the 
to the to the to your lower back. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Now get up and start doing what you're not able to do. As you look at me, do that thing which you're not able to do. Get out of your bed, get off your chair, and do what you're not able to do. You realize the power of God has touched you. You realize you're doing what you're not able to do. That's the power of God that has healed you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. We shall come again to you next Sunday as we continue this series. Now I want to give you an opportunity. If you have never given your life to Jesus, this is the opportunity. Jesus died and rose again so that you could receive eternal life. And it's easy. You confess that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you will be saved. Or have you been thinking about it lately? If it has been your thought, your recurring thought that, I think I need to give my life to Jesus. If we have been coming to you, if another person has been preaching and the thought has been coming to you and saying, you need to give your life to Jesus. That is God that has been knocking at the door of your heart. The Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man listens and opens, I will enter and I dine with him and he with me. Jesus wants to enter your life. He died on the cross so that you and I could enjoy eternal life. I want to lead you in a prayer that will change your life forever. That is how every one of us who is born again, that's how we started. We started by confessing that Jesus is Lord and believing in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we were saved. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I confess that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. Today I ask you in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive healing in my body. I receive the gift of eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you. Send us a message on one of those numbers that are on the screen. We'll give you an opportunity. I also want to invite you to pray with us. Every day, we have a, a space where we pray together with people from all over the world. It's called the CNI Upper Room. It's online. We pray together every morning from 5 to 6 a.m. And every lunchtime from 1 to 2 p.m. East African time. You can join us on that link that is on the screen. Or you can send a message on that number that's on the screen. And they will send you the link. People have been healed of diabetes during that, those, those prayers. People have been healed of hypertension. People, there's somebody whose cancer diagnosis changed. People have been healed of different things. People have given their life to Christ. People have recommitted their lives to Jesus. Businesses have been revived in those prayer times. Join us in the upper room and your life shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. With His power, He has raised out me. With His blood, He has saved me. To God be the glory for all. Take off.